In today's video, I'll bring you five things I wish I knew before learning the Arabic language. So I hope that you guys enjoy this. And if you want to know those five things, stay until the end. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's your brother Muhammad, founder of AndalusInstitute.com. So throughout my years in life, I have realized that there are certain things that you can learn from looking at other people's life and other people's failures and other people's mistakes. This is why today I bring you guys five things that I wish I knew that I obviously got to know, but only through the process of learning the Arabic language and had to, you know, make my own mistakes and waste my little time doing this or doing that until I actually realized that, that was the thing that I was supposed to be doing from the very beginning. So the first thing that I wish I knew before learning the Arabic language is learning the Arabic language and any other thing is not restricted by a place. You know, in this whole culture of seeking knowledge and in this whole culture of learning the Arabic language and becoming more knowledgeable in our first few steps, there is a good, very good image that Egypt has gained across the years about learning the Arabic language because of their experience in teaching non-native Arabs, which obviously came as well throughout the years because, you know, the place was very easy to enter. There was many businesses that saw the opportunity talking about Arabic language centers and they started to open more and more and more. So it was a very easy place for you to go learn Arabic and get out of there. So because of that, many people, they tend to delay the learning of the Arabic language because they cannot go to Egypt. So it creates that mindset. If I'm not in Egypt, I cannot learn the Arabic language, which is obviously false and is a very toxic thought to have because it would just delay your goals. And that happened to me in the beginning, but it happened in a different way. I used to be in Egypt and have those thoughts about Medina. Well, if I cannot get to Medina, then... I won't do this then or I won't do this until I get an answer from Medina University if they accepted me or not and it's kind of like just living your life based on waiting on people and it's just not healthy to have basically so that's the first thing the second thing that I wish I knew before learning the Arabic language is sharp and massive memorization of vocabulary how important that is how important it is for you to focus the most energy put on should be on vocabulary and grab will come gradually as you learn more and more vocabulary. I still preach and I still tell my students, that's how we set our program, Arabic like an Arab, that you shouldn't learn Arabic grammar unless you are able to understand a full lesson of Arabic grammar only in Arabic. Because yes, it is possible. And if you look at yourself, you might be listening to this in English and you might not know English grammar. And that's the case of most of us. Learns how to speak English or whatever language and they don't know about grammar. They just pick it up. They just pick up up those ways on how do you know that after did if I use did the verb that comes after needs to be a present tense verb I did not eat you don't say I did not eat you might now have in mind yeah because that's natural right that's second nature that's just known so you can actually get to that point as well in Arabic where you get this native speaker sixth instinct where it's like nah that doesn't sound right that doesn't sound Arabic yeah it just doesn't sound right like you can actually get to that level but it requires a lot of vocabulary and it requires like many people say in order for you to master a skill you need 10,000 hours put in that skill so you can get to that level and I started experiencing this after maybe two years where you start realizing like nah this doesn't sound right until today I still test myself I would look at certain questions that I might be asked or certain questions that might pop to my head and find the answer you know do my own effort in answering that question and then I would ask my teacher who actually taught me Arabic 10 years ago and you know I still all my questions go back to him and then he will give me the same answer that I had in mind and this builds confidence because now nine out of ten times that you ask him a question you already had that answer in your mind it obviously takes time to develop that instinct but you get there as well so yeah massive memorization of vocabulary massive and sharp memorization of vocabulary as well like actually knowing that vocabulary like the back of your hand before you know memorizing new vocabulary which is kind of like the same concept as memorizing the quran you don't turn the page until you have memorized that and you're able to recite from the top of your head the third point which uh brings me to this having mentioned my teacher and the one that i still go to and the one that i ask all the questions this third point is that the grass is not greener on the other side 
but it's greener where you water it. And you will see this amongst many students. Many students, they are in Egypt. You know, a friend of their, their roommate goes to another institute, whatever it might be. And, you know, one is in Al-Ibana, the other one is Al-Fajr Institute, the other one is in Nil, and the other one is in Lisan Al-Arab, and the other one is wherever they are. And now they meet each other and they look at the other one's progress and they think that progress is being caused because of that institute or it might be the teacher. So they keep jumping from teacher to teacher or from Merkaz to Merkaz or from program to program or from book to book looking for the greener grass. And the grass is not greener on the other side. It's greener where you water it. If you put the effort to make that work, that thing that you are working on, if you put the effort to make that work, complete that book, accept the flaws or the shortcomings of that teacher or whatever it might be, and you go until the end of that program, until you have anything else to learn from that teacher, until that book is done, until you have completed the program of that particular merkaz. If you actually go through these process, you will see that all methods really work. Some of them are faster and some of them are slower, some of them are efficient, some of them are less efficient. But you will definitely benefit from all of those concepts. And the point is to complete the thing, like actually go through the process and you will see that you will definitely benefit and then jump into the next thing. But don't just leave things in the middle of whatever you know thing you do in the book or the teacher or the program and then jump into another thing. Because once you go to the other thing, now you start all over again. And this brings me to the fourth point, which is that to keep momentum is very important. The momentum, the momentum when learning the Arabic language. I can't stress this enough on how important it is to keep the momentum. What I mean by this is that you are uh, studying the Medina books, for example. You get to the third book and realize that the Medina books are taught for a specific type of students who are then going to go into the Jamia and in the Jamia they are going to have supplements to that particular book and even in the Ma'had they have supplements to that particular book. So the way how they are teaching it is not really how it's supposed to be taught, but because it's the Medina books and it has the name and the social proof, then everybody goes to the Medina books. So you realize all of that in the middle of the book, then you go ahead and jump to Al Arabi ibn Adik because now you have heard this person say that in Al Arabi ibn Adik on average you get 4,000 to 5,000 lexical items at the end of the eight series or eight books. That's why many people they are able to speak more after completing Al Arabi ibn Adik than with the Medina books because the Medina books they mostly teach grammar and it's not that the Medina books have a deficiency, but it's just that it's not taught how it's supposed to be taught in the university. And you realize all of this stuff, right? That I'm not talking about it right now, but just giving you facts. And what you do instead of completing the program, in my humble opinion, yes, La Rabibi Nedik for the very beginner student is more efficient than the Medina books. But however, if you come to me and you tell me you are on book three of Medina book or book two, I'll tell you, okay, complete that and then start the next thing. Why? Because you cannot break the momentum. It's just like going to the gym or doing keto, right? The keto diet, very known now very popular for the keto diet to be efficient you actually need to spend a certain amount of time things 20 days or about a month in that state of ketosis where you don't eat carbs and you're only eating fats etc in order for that diet to be efficient and in order for that amount of or that period of time uh, for you to start burning fat if you within that period of time those 20 days 30 days you break the momentum and eat carbs more than what you're supposed to be eating or, or whatever it might be you have now breaking the momentum and it's almost like a speedometer the speedometer this is the beginning right? so speedometer when the car starts going starts accelerating goes like boom get to a point if you stop accelerating then it goes back and now if you start accelerating again you gotta start from the very bottom and yes, the aftermath of you stopping is the car keep going. But little by little, that will go away. So it's the same with learning Arabic. And I hope that you guys get this example and this metaphor because it's so the same. You start learning Arabic, you start accelerating, you get to a point, you're like, oh, wait a minute, this is not working. I think that works better. And you go where you look for the grass where it's greener. So you go there. Now the accelerator, the needle starts to go down. And yeah, you start, you keep moving because you have memorized some of that book, etc. So you have the as aftermath and athumala, as they say in Arabic, which is like the little water that, or the little whatever at the last of a pot that is left. That's athumala. And you get thumala, which, you know, you remember some of that particular book of that particular program, but it's not there. Now, if you keep that momentum and if you read the book, if you memorize in the book or going through the book, whatever it might be, and go to the end of the book with the intention of completing that book efficiently and 
successfully memorize everything that is in that book, understand every single subject. Once you get to the end, you will see that yes, maybe the book is not as efficient as that book, but you have now benefited from that book. You have now benefited from everything that book was offering. And this brings me to my fifth point. It's better to master one book than learn three. Wise men once said in the Arabic language, خَيْرٌ لَكَ أَن تَقْرَأْ كِتَابًا وَاحِدًا ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتٍ مِنْ أَن تَقْرَأْ ثَلَاثَةَ كُتُبٍ جَدِيدَةٍ now it's more beneficial for you to read one book than to read three new books and that's what i'm trying to say like it will be even more beneficial if you go through one book three times master that book and then jump into the next one to the point where you are even able to teach it to the point where you are even able to benefit your classmates to the point where you are able to be asked anything at any point about that book and be able to answer it it's more beneficial than you jumping from book to book and you have this list of like all of these books you want to go through and <laughs> and you are so in a rush to get to those books just to say i have gone through those books or whatever it might be but you don't realize that the person who have mastered al-ajurumiya and perhaps al-mutamim as well with it with a good explanation depending on the teacher the, the book depends a lot on how it teaches it you don't realize that that person who has mastered that is going to be more efficient than you in understanding nahu obviously if you understand how you understand text etc as al imam al zuhri said man talaba al ilm jumlatan dhahaba anhu jumlatan inna ma yutlabu al ilm ala marr al ayam wal layali whoever tries to acquire al ilm all at once you want to go through al jurmiya al mutammim al alfiya and qadr and that and this and that you want to accomplish all of this all at once without tadarruj without gradually jumping from level to level okay i have mastered this level let me go to the next one without doing that it's going to go away from you all at once just like you are trying to acquire it all at once and then he says inna ma yutlabu al ilm ala marr al ayam wal layali but rather al ilm is sought you know with the going of the days and nights meaning gradually like take your time with it it needs to be something that you apply in your life this is you now you're a seeker of knowledge you need to make your whole life about it Otherwise, it's going to be very hard to say, oh, I'm um, this type of person. I do this in my life or whatever. I would just take one year off, attain knowledge, and then jump back into what I was doing. That doesn't really happen. You actually have to make it your main thing in your life. And that's why Ibn Qudama al-Maqdisi said, وَيَنْبَغِي لِطَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ قَطْعُ الْعَلَائِقِ الشاغلة وكان السلف يؤثرون العلم على كل شيء وكان السلف يؤثرون العلم على كل شيء نعم and the, the student of knowledge needs to cut the ties that you know distracts him and the salaf the predecessors they used to make العلم the seeking of knowledge the main thing the most preferable and beloved things to them and you know primary thing in their life it would be العلم like yes you have responsibilities you have things to do in your life but as soon as you are done with your responsibilities, working, taking care of family, the first thing that comes to your mind is your seeking of knowledge. That's a thing, a thing. <laughs> I'm doing alif la uh, with alif lam shamsiya with with thing, a thing. The thing, الذي تؤثروا, the thing that you give preference in your life is al -ilm. And yeah, guys, I'm not trying to make this video long. I'm enjoying this a lot. Uh, this first video, I am actually sending to different video editors because I'm trying to be more efficient in, in recording content for you guys. But to be honest with you, the thing that pushes me back is the addition time and spending time on the laptop editing it just takes a lot of time so uh, this video is going to be the first test if you are seeing now this on my youtube channel it means that i have picked an editor so let me know what you guys think about that particular editor and let me know what you guys think about these five things that I wish I knew before starting to learn the Arabic language and tell me if you have benefit from those in the comments down below. All right, guys, and let me know if you guys have other questions. I will look at the questions on the previous video about things you have asked and I hope you guys benefited a lot. I'm very excited to work with a video editor, actually, to put more content out there. And yeah, peace out. I hope you guys benefited.